wouldn't want to land in there. In our last video, Floods, Thermals, and Fun, we checked out the rare flooding on the Gila River in the Arizona desert. We made it all the way to the Fortaleza Indian Ruins before I felt nauseous and had to go back. So today we are going to explore downstream from Fortaleza to where the Painted Rock Dam is creating a temporary lake. I really wanted to come back here to see this area because it only becomes a lake under rare circumstances. It's only happened three other times, in 1980, 1993, and 2005. Being in the desert, I have to admit, I get really excited when we see water. The river used to flow here at the Gila Bend before the dams were built upstream. Now the river is completely dry from Gillespie Dam all the way to California where the Gila River joins the Colorado River. It's like without water and with water. Eighteen years ago in 2005, heavy runoff filled the reservoir to record levels, making the lake to be the second largest by area in the state of Arizona after Roosevelt Lake. If you follow the river downstream, you can see the Oatman Massacre site in the distance. When Diane said she wanted to go to Painted Rock Dam, I plotted a direct course from Buckeye Airport. This course allowed us to fly over Woolsey Peak, named after King Woolsey. King Woolsey is a famous pioneer in this area. This course also took us over the volcanic fields that I always love flying over. I climbed up to 5,000 feet, which gave us a great overall view of the area. And after cutting power, it's so cool to just float down towards the dam. Well, look at that crater right there. Yeah, you see that like... Oh, yeah. that line, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go look at this white thing that you wanted. Is it a helipad, maybe? Wow. Might be for a helicopter. Does it say H on it? Or, oh, it's a water thing. It sheds the water, and the tank is below it. Boy, that's quite a build. What is that flat rectangle, though? I think that's what catches the water. Oh, it like sheds, underneath? Or yeah, it, well, it sheds it, it grabs that much water, sheds it down to a little pipe. The pipe goes down below, fills it by gravity, fills that big tank up. The Painted Rock Dam was completed in 1960 to protect small farming communities further downstream. The dam is named after the nearby Painted Rock Petroglyph site which has over 800 images carved into the rocks, believed to be from the Hohokam Indians who once lived and farmed in the area. In 2005, the lake was even a lot higher as the water reached the top of the dam and these small islands were not visible. And here's the only water we had before. Unfortunately, after the flood of 2005, this area became contaminated due to pesticide runoff, rendering it unsuitable for recreational use and public access both to the lake and the dam is still restricted to this day. Even more devastating, the floods destroyed several tribal farms and communities. And even though the Tohono O'odham tribe was given $30 million and 10,000 acres of new land, I can't imagine the loss this tribe must have felt losing this beautiful land. Oh, sure is murky 
see down there. That is gross. I wouldn't want to land in there. It wouldn't be a land, it would be a crash. Can you imagine if we landed in there? It would be a terrible way to go. It'd be cold water, dirty, filthy. I should be a little higher. So I'll climb up a little bit. At least if I die, I go on the other side of the dam. see the power lines on the dam? I'm flying us over to Painted Rock. Painted Rock is about five miles and is bearing 176 degrees magnetic from the dam. Flying low has its dangers. Don't do it if you don't know where the power lines are. I always ask my passenger to be my second set of eyes. Expect power lines where you don't expect them. They will be higher than you would expect and also in very remote areas far away from civilizations. Don't expect to see the power line. Look for the power poles. The power poles can be way farther apart than you would also imagine. The power line may be directly ahead of you and in your path, but if you don't look left and right and look for the power pole, power line. you'll fly right into the power line. Here is a prime example of the dangers of power lines. Notice the farmer's dirt runway ahead. What are extremely difficult to see are the power lines directly in our approach path. There are no orange balls marking the power lines and the power poles are set back a long distance. Power line. Painted rock is really not painted at all. 
It is a well-known location where petroglyphs were carved into the stone. Starting around 1,000 plus years ago, the Native Americans started marking these stones. Famous Juan Batista de Anza came through here in 1775 on his way to founding San Francisco. Pioneers in the 1800s also came through this way and also marked the rocks. You might ask, why are these called painted rock? Because they're not painted. A Jesuit priest named them when he journeyed through here in 1748, and the name remained ever since. These are petroglyphs, meaning carved into the stone. I've had my eye on this for a while now. I'm beginning to suspect the Hohokam Indians dug this for a canal system. It's right at the base of Fortaleza. I asked Roger to fly low in the riverbed. It's such a rush. Diane wanted to fly low along the Gila riverbed after the flood water subsided. We flew low along the riverbed in the areas I'm familiar where the power lines are located. I can't overemphasize to expect power lines where you don't expect them. I'm speaking to myself here, reminding myself to always be aware of dangers of low flight. Remember if flying down a canyon, the power lines can be thousands of feet in the air. We came up to an area where I wasn't sure about and so I flew up to scout it. Oh yeah, power lines over the wash right there. And the poles are really far apart. See the poles? Yeah, but I don't even see the power lines going across the water. I know, they're there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, oh yeah, there they are. Wow. That's a prime example of dangerous, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the, how far apart they are. So there's one pole there, and one pole over there. That yeah. is a humongous span. That is a really long span. Wow, they should put balls on there. I know, they really should. Wow. For people like us. 
Right. Like a fly low. North of Phoenix, some years back, we had a helicopter flying down a river and it hit a cable killing all five people aboard. It was supposed to be a scenic flight. When I saw the story on the news, I knew exactly where it happened and what they hit. We had kayaked that remote area of the river. The cable was for a cart that goes across the river to check water flow. The cable was about 50 feet above the river. I would not have expected a cable to be there, nor did that pilot. Flying is addictive, and flying low in an open aircraft where you can see the ground right below you accentuates the feeling of this incredible experience. <laughs> 